All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Reza Abraham, who is in Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. How are you doing, Reza? I'm doing great. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. This is one of the things that I learned it from one of my sales mentors many, many years ago, they said that as a salesperson, you should always answer unbelievable. And when I ask like, why? They said like, you know, when you are in sales, sometimes, you know, things will go great. And then people will come and see you and say, how are you? you say unbelievable. And then the following week, everything goes wrong. And people come and ask you like, how are you doing? Unbelievable. <laughs> so it works in both situations. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I love it. And, uh, and Reza is the founder of the In Control Group. He's an author, executive coach, leadership consultant, and speaker focusing on topics that have transformed hundreds of organizations, empowering their people to be in control of their lives. And you have a, you have a new book. Uh, and is that the book is uh, still in pre-release, is it? Yes, now uh, it's already out. So the okay. book is out for almost like a month and uh, in control, a systematic approach on taking control of your life and career. Yeah, it's out. Fantastic. Okay, so let's talk about uh, taking control of your life and career. Uh, and you say they come in, uh, there, there are 10, or you say like living a control life is not accidental, it's intentional. intentional. And I don't think mm. a lot of people really understand what intentional means. Yep. So, um, John, I have never worked with any individual in the last 20 years that come and tell me that, hey, you know what? I become rich accidentally. I become like, you know, you, you don't even lose 5 kg accidentally. You don't, you don't even gain 5 kg accidentally. Anything happened to us is very intentional. And what is the meaning of intentional? It means that you got to have a rock solid goals. You need to be super clear about what you want to do. And you need to have a proper uh, timeline in order how to achieve them. You need to have a plan. And most importantly, you need to have a commitment. So when you become super duper intention about something, obstacles is, is just the way, you know, you will get through it. You will get through it because you are very much like, focusing on i wanted this so bad and yeah um yeah john yeah, can you hear me yeah i can yeah you just froze for a second it's okay um i think that's the, i think you're you're correct there because i don't because as you say i think people allow life happen to them in some accidental ways or or they outsource they it to fate which i always think is a really brave thing to do is to outsource your future to fate um and i think I'm, on top of that is that if you ask people what their purpose is, so when you talk about get, setting goals, I don't think people mm. could even, most people could even tell you what their purpose is. All right. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So, so how do you, when you start with people, how do you, how do you get people to start? Number one, I think we live in such a crazy world today, obviously, that people are feeling completely out of control and thinking everything is beyond my control right now. How do you help convince people that there are things that they can actually affect? Yep. You see, John, things have certain things that is within our control and there are certain things that is out of our control. There is no denial on that. But what's very important here is that we need to take complete control of the things. Uh, we need to take complete responsibility for the things that we can control, which is within our reach. And we just need to stop apologizing for the things that we cannot control. Like, let me give you an example. I mean, the most obvious one is what's happening right now is the COVID situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we can't control the COVID. That is very obvious. Everybody knows that. Yeah. But we can protect ourselves against the COVID. Same goes to, you know, for example, if you're talking about like salespeople, is that they you, you can't control what the customer will say yes or no. But what you can control is your effort, your hard work, the techniques that you're using. All those things will make a lot of difference. So that's why we oftentimes, when we are working with the leaders, when we are working with the salespeople, we always tell them like, Know, pay all your attention on the things that there is always something that with, is within your reach and within your control. You just need to figure out what is that. 
Yeah, and I think the other thing, I think the other thing, Reza, because you mentioned it at the beginning, I like that when I said, like, how are you today? And you said, unbelievable, is you can choose, and this is particularly relevant to sales, but it's relevant to all roles. You have complete control on how you show up. Exactly, right? exactly. Yeah, so how you show up and how you yeah. and, and, and how you intend to act, and that, that that is completely within your control. It's within your control what inputs you let into your life. Are you just letting negative ones in or are you looking for positive? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So it's it's a lot, you know, we, we we control our inputs, whatever comes in. This is like, you know, I, I I remember this quote from Zig Ziglar. He said that, you know, your attitude will determine your altitude. You know, what kind of mindset do you have? What you let in will always determine where uh, how uh, how high you go. And that is something that, you know, uh, it's 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 kind of related to our RAF as well our reticular activating system which like you know what you listen to who are you talk to who you surround yourself and this is this is something that we all know you are an average of five people you spend most of your time with so if the people around you all of them are out of control are the people that are always nagging always complaining always saying like oh this is this this is bad i don't know what's happening right now you know what the government's going to do for us what these people politicians going to do for us well you know what you, can't, you have no control over what they do. At the end of the day, they make the decision, right? But what we can do is to take care of all the things that we are in complete control, meaning that the people who we spend time with, what do you read, what do you listen to, and uh, who do you spend time with, and that is pretty much is going to be a determined for our future as well. Like, you know, who are you going to be five years from now, 10 years from now? Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I think uh, and I think part of it is that you have to honestly. So when you ex look at who you're surrounding yourself with, uh, then you have to be honest to yourself is what role are those people serving for you? Because they're serving some kind of purpose for you. It may not be a good purpose, but it, it, they're serving a purpose for you. And you have to figure that out and then say, OK, uh, I can see now I either have to let that person go or or whatever it is you need to do. But I think you've got to bring it back to yourself and ask yourself, what purpose are these uh, what purpose are these people playing in my life? Yep, that's true. That's true. Uh, see, I, I personally found, John, every person that we go through our life, whether good or bad, they will leave some marks on your life. Mm -hmm. And the most important things that this is, this is the lessons that when I was in my early 20, I learned it, I think, from a uh, legendary Jim Ron, you know. So he said that the people that you meet are not very important, but who you become as an association with them, that is very important because the purpose that they serve can influence your purpose in life too. And that's, that's really essential. It means that you become who you spend time with because your purpose and their purpose kind of like, you know, will start to sink after a while. And that's, that's very important. So I, I, you know, whenever people, leaders ask me is that, or salespeople ask me like, you know, what do I need to do in order to improve myself? The first things that I always tell them is to do a self-evaluation on the people that you spend time with. And they will truly influence who you are. You know, it truly influence you are yeah and the other thing and i know you mentioned this you talk about this in your book but i think you know condition um mm. retain a healthy state of body mind and soul and i think this is somewhere where i think maybe the last couple of years have maybe brought this home to people a little more you know that you need to you need to look after your body and your mind and your soul whatever that means to you your spirituality whatever that is yeah. but we can't continue to divorce these things i mean such as i always say in 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 medicine like to just traditional like western medicine you go to a doctor when you got a pain in your knee you go to a shrink when you got a when you're you know depressed right and never the two yeah. shall talk <laughs> you know, they don't they don't really work together <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. That's that's actually is like something very interesting. When I was doing my research on the book and all and all the interviews. So I met like two group of people from two different school of thoughts, you know. So when you speak with the Westerns and compared to the Easterns, mm -hmm. I you will see like, you know, uh, now now of course, you know, they're they're getting much closer to one another. 
But um, when, when you are talking about health, I always like to look at it in a very holistic way, yeah? Because uh, you can't take care of your food, you can't take care of your physique, but if you don't take care of your mental, emotional, and spiritual, this, these things will not come together because all four of them are connecting to one another. So that's why they say like your mood, your food, you know? So when you are feeling down, you're feeling demotivated, it definitely impacts the way you consume food as well. Meaning that at the end of the day, it all goes back to our consciousness, mm -hmm. how aware you are, you know, about what you're doing. And, uh, and that is basically the center of the in control life. The center of the in-control in life and career is all about being conscious about what we eat. We're conscious about what you think, what you talk about, you know. And uh, th that's why they always say you cannot have a negative mouth and a positive life because it will it, it all get connected, you know. So if you are always like being emotional or being, for example, like out of your control. So what will happen eventually will also influence like what you consume on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, that, that's why it's, it's always best to do it self-reflections. And if you are not very good at self-reflection, oh, one of sorry. the most important things that I found. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I meant to hang up, I beg, beg your pardon. Yeah, no worries. Okay, sorry about that. Hang on, I'm just trying to get rid of this. And we're we going to edit this anyway, because we have a few glitches. Hang on, let me just get rid yeah. of it. Yeah. Uh, um, it seems like okay. internet a bit like weird. Yeah, it's a today. bit crazy today, all right? Yeah. No, shoot, shoot, sorry. I'm, I'm trying to hang. Ah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, we just, I'm trying no to get worries. rid of something here. Sorry about that. No worries, no worries. Okay. Sorry, Go. go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. So, um, so I, I was, I was explaining about, uh, the, uh, so the approach that we always recommend people to go for, it's a very holistic approach on, on health, meaning that we can't just focusing on our physical side. We also need to pay attention to, to the rest of, uh, the areas as well. And this is actually one of the concepts that I, I really loved it. And I talk about it in the book as well. It's about moving from focusing on time management is to focusing on your energy management. So energy management is a very holistic view, which is focusing on uh, exactly like where do you waste all your energy in terms of physical, emotional, mental, and also spiritual, which all of them, John, all of them are completely connected. You know, you can't, you can't just take care of your physical side and you're thinking like, you know, oh, I'm, 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 I'm doing fine, you know, and uh, most of the diseases will come to us basically when it starts from our emotional, mental, and spiritual side, because that's where you will see it on your physical side. It will appear in the way your body looks like. Yeah, and, and it's fascinating too, because I mean, I, to I totally agree with that. And it's not just... It's also uh, you. You can sort of be be positive and and forward moving in that, but then like all of the inputs, as we said, are negative. You can if you listen to, if you're always listening to your particular brand of news, and you know, mm. news is designed today not to inform; it's designed to provoke and a reaction. And so if you are reacting all the time, and whatever, you you can't. It's gonna it's gonna affect your body eventually, and your obviously it's affecting your mind, but it's gonna affect your body, and you're not gonna be able to show up as your best. Exactly, exactly. And you know, when is the most important time, John? Early in the morning. Yeah, I think this is that's why we always tell like, you know, win the morning, win the day, you know, I always tell the people that I work with, and all the leaders that I work with, it's that they protect their morning, like the life depends on it. It's like at all costs, like no argument, no bad news, no, <laughs> no listening to the news of like what's going on in the world right now, nothing. They are laser focused, listening to good music, reading positive stuff. And I know some people will say, but if you don't listen to the news, you don't know anything. Well, I, I, I always believe that if something is so important, somebody will tell me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 agree, I agree with you. I always say, listen, if there's a meteor headed towards our neighborhood, one of the neighbors is going to tell me. And yeah, then, like, exactly. Today, so. <laughs> um, but other than that, I don't think uh, there's much going on in most people's lives. It's that, that 
that is that dramatic. The, the other thing I just wanted to talk to you quickly about is curiosity, because mm. I think when it comes to, and particularly in a role like sales, when it comes to real curious, genuine intellectual curiosity is so key because uh, if you're genuinely curious, then you will want to go on a journey with the people you talk to. You'll want to understand what's going on. You'll empathize, you know, curiosity and empathy kind of flow together. That's, that's, that's true. So um, curiosity is like number one. And it ought to start when you have a genuine interest to help other people. This is, this is how we define sales as a whole. So sales is all about trust. It's all about you genuinely want to help other people. You know, and uh, the, the whole steps of helping somebody else to solve the problem, it starts with the fact that you are very curious to know about their challenges, the problems, their needs. Yeah. You know, I, I, I always like hear this, uh, this quote that I'm sure you also have heard this before. Have you heard this before, John? They say like, you know, the best salesperson on earth is the one who can sell ice to Eskimo. Yeah. Have you heard mm -hmm. that before? Mm -hmm. Yep. Or. Yeah, it's like a very typical cliche, uh, mm -hmm. sales, salesish kind of things that, you know, I always say like, that's not a salesman, that's the con man, you know, because yeah, yeah. you are, you are not selling something to the people that will they need it, right? And uh, it all starts when we become very curious, you know, how exactly we can help other people. So curiosity is one of the most important pillar in living an in control life, you know, and uh, what is very important is that you genuinely become interested, asking people great questions before you move on into mm -hmm. on, on. yeah absolutely and 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 asking them and asking them providing any you, solution to people yeah absolutely and i said and asking questions that you genuinely are interested in the answer you're not asking questions out of here's a question list i have for the sake you're of answer, asking yeah yeah you're asking questions out of a genuine curiosity and if you if you go with a genuine curiosity then you will find your you will find the questions flow yes exactly exactly because people can feel it you know the moment we open up our mouth people already know whether are you seriously genuinely keen to to have this conversation with me are you really uh, want to help you know oh. so that's that's where like you know the whole concept of like a curiosity will comes in yeah no no I, absolutely and I, and I think that's a that's very much overlooked by people I think the fact that you know we're genuine curiosity because uh, I mean, a lot of sales people call me and sometimes it's it's quite it's quite difficult sometimes because I know what they're doing and I know they're trying to go through a process that's been laid out for them. They're always like, okay, well, let's, let, let's dig into your company first and blah, blah, let me tell you all this kind of stuff. And I'm always like, no, let's cut to the stuff that's important to me. Can we just get past all this? And, mm. and, it, and it's funny how, how many people still rely on that approach. And, and they almost kind of get offended when you say, I, I, I understand this, but I really, I, I understand how all of this works. I really just want to get to the meat of, of this discussion. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. I think, I think, I think sales has evolved a lot, uh, especially in the last post COVID, you know, and uh, I think, I think uh, one, of, one of the very interesting things that John, we found uh, based on the works that we have done with all these companies is that um, sales is moving from like people are no longer interested on what you they're very much interested about what other people are doing at this yeah. point right now. That is what we call it like a FOMO, you know, fear of missing yeah. out. So I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been telling salespeople for the past two years years that you have to shift towards that direction. So you can't go around and tell people like, oh, we have this new product. We have this new promotion. Uh, would you want it? You know, people say, well, you know what? Send me an email. But actually, they yeah. never respond to all those things. But if you can tell people that, hey, you know what? I have someone who have in the same industry as you, let's say in aviation, in, you know, tourism or those industries that they are heavily impacted, right? Yeah. And I have this client in the same industry as you. If you can give me like 10 minutes, I can share with you what they are doing at this point right now. And people are very keen to hear to that. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's that's one of the most valuable and things. And they are not uh, keen to hear to the other side. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. You're, this is one of the most valuable things you can do is actually because that's what I want from a salesperson. I want to know 
what experiences have you had with other like mm. companies in a similar situation that you could give me some insight? Then you, then you tell me something I don't know, and that's beautiful. Yes, correct, correct, correct. Yeah. Well, listen, um, Reza, this has been great. Like all Reza's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, Reza, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so I have, uh, I have been involved in leadership and sales since uh, my early 20s. I have this uh, opportunity to work with uh, many organizations from all over around the world uh, from what we call it as uh, multinational companies from PwC, mm -hmm. KPMG, McDonald, Dell. Uh, and uh, my goal basically has always been around this idea that when leaders get better, the whole organization gets better. When the salespeople get better, what we offer and how we serve the world will get better. So uh, my journey basically has, uh, has always about like finding what does it take for two people working in the same organizations, one achieve an extraordinary result, and one is always the struggle with ordinary things. And uh, so when I wrote the book In Control, the key purpose that I wanted to help everybody around was that teaching people through a systematic approach on how to take complete control of their life and career. And that simply means you love what you do, you love who you do it with, you love who you do it for, and you love how you do it. It means how long you do it, where you do it, and how you do it. So that that has been my attention for the last uh, for the last ten years, and we've been sharing the message yeah. with the world. That's fantastic, Rosa. Listen, thanks again for joining us today, and. Uh... Uh, thank you all for watching and listening. As I said, all Reza's information is below the video, so please do take a look and, and reach out. All right, my name is John Golden. Thanks again, Reza. I'll see you all again soon.